Andy, The Nitrous, and this is my podcast where I like to share with you all the things that I do with yarn and fiber, mostly knitting, um, although I do have quite a bit of crochet here today. So let's jump right in. So, elephant in the room. I finished my Scrappy V by Jamie Huffman. Back up so I can show it to you. I made a snazzy little pocket on it because, you know, who doesn't like pockets? I love this short row shaping that brings all the stripes down to even. I really love what that does for my shoulders. And this is possibly my favorite sweater right now. So I finished that. It's all scraps and fingering weight. And I got two different sleeves because, you know, I'm crazy like that. But I'm just smitten with it. <sighs> I have finished a crochet shawl. This yarn is yarn that I got in a bag from my husband's grandmother and I think that it is Noro sport weight cotton silk blend. I can't remember the name of it. From what I found with the colors that are in here, a little bit of internet research, but I really like this. I just always liked this ball of yarn. It was in there with a whole bunch of other yarns that, that she gave me. So I like that. It's a good, you know, just extra layer for when it gets chilly, if that ever happens. Bright and colorful, just like me. So there's no pattern for this. It's just double crochet triangle shawl, you know, an increase on each side and two in the center. So, if you know anything about um, pattern shawl construction, you could figure it out. But, I love it. And, I got a lot of FOs, I guess. I was feeling like I didn't have anything done. I finished my square up jacket. This pattern is by Earth Yarns. I modified it a little, made it a lot bigger, and then I used a bigger yarn so that it would fall bigger. Let's slide my chair over so I can back up and show you guys. It's kimono style, so it comes down long. I made <laughs> two pockets, but I put it on inside out. All right, let's try that again. So I made a pocket, because why not? And this is a really great overpiece. I obviously wouldn't wear it with this bright sweater, but this has been on my hook for, I don't know, I'd say since March, maybe, but, and this is in, um, Lion Brand Shell in a Cake, I'm pretty sure, it's like, you know, an acrylic cotton, mm, mohair-like blend, I don't know if you can see the the mohair fuzz. Oh, don't fall in my coffee. But yeah. So, finish that, finish that, finish that. I have one other finished object that I got some inspiration for this from Chevy Row. And I think maybe the Woolies podcast shared one or Locknet shared one on, on her um, feed. And I had this hand spun yarn 
that had been sitting on my table for however long and it was just a little bit it was one of my first hand spuns and it's very thick and thin you know I got thinner as I got closer to the end but in the beginning when I started with the purple it was really thick so I just crocheted up in, into a little tabard for my pins and I've got just some straight knitting needles that I don't ever use holding that on there I got that idea from Chevy Rail and I told her I was gonna I was gonna steal that idea whenever I got around to making mine <laughs> and so I just have some of my my pins and um, just progress keepers and stuff some things hanging on there and it hangs right over on the wall right there and it just makes me smile it's a rainbow and there's sparkle in it and you can see I have a Woolies podcast pin and moon and yarn uh, and that is because I won one of their giveaways and I was so excited I I say that I don't win anything ever but I feel like I've been pretty lucky lately with winning things I don't know maybe my maybe my luck's changed so I won this pattern the sweet slice shawl by Haley Nordstrom and I got their pins and their stickers and I got this yarn by Foster's Fibers to make that shawl with and this is just gorgeous this is like right up my color palette alley that sounds right um, so I'm excited to eventually get this cast on I don't know when that will happen I have all the things right now that I'm working on and they are not all getting their fair share of attention this got most of the attention but yeah so I was super excited to win to win that so thank you again for the opportunity and I can't wait to cast this on so Another thing I've been working on is uh, the Blanket of Calm uh, by Casapinka. It's just what I, I decided, because I did 11 stripes with each of these colors, and I still had, you know, a little ball of yarn left over, so I decided to make some granny squares, and I've been keeping them just, you know, in a glass jar. Um... Just making some little Caspinka Blanket of Calm squares and I just really like them. They're so adorable. They're tiny. It takes me about three and a half to four grams of yarn to make one square. So I cast on a bunch after like I'd finish a stripe and then I'd have a little bit left and so then I'd make a square. And so I have a little bit left and so when I made my square up jacket I seamed the shoulder with the slip stitch steam which is recommended for putting these squares together I don't like it because you have a valley uh, where they're connected on the top side and then you have a, a seam on the bottom side so I thought well you know can't I just mattress stitch crochet together and I didn't look it up or anything I just from what I know of mattress stitching decided to just go for it and then after I did it I, I looked it up and you can totally mattress stitch um, crochet together and I really like it because then you just have your squares next to each other there's no seam there's just the tiniest little feels like a ridge it's basically where they're just butted up next to each other and you can't see that I've used different yarn color yarn to seam them together you, you don't see it anywhere in there I mean unless you like pull it apart but I'm super happy that I figured that out because when this is all done it's just gonna be it's gonna lay nice and flat matches my sweater right now I don't know this just brings me 
so much happiness these little these little squares so you can mattress stitch crochet together who would have known I wish I'd have known that for my other crochet blanket because that was one of the things I was not happy with I just wanted my cute squares to be right next to each other I didn't want I didn't want a seam it is it is harder to do like it's fiddlier you have to get so on the the top ridge you know of each square there you're picking up one loop on this side and then one loop on the other side and you have to get it just in the right spot and it takes some work and it's slow going but it's totally worth it So I've been working on that. Well, not so much now that I've finished the sweater, but you know, my little jar back there of sock minis will grow again and then I will have more squares. So the other thing I have been working on is another thing that I've kind of sort of made up. There's no pattern. Um, my daughter last year watched Halloween Town for the first time and she went through and watched all of the episodes and there was an episode where Marnie had a shawl on just like this and these are just pictures from my television I paused it took a picture tried to find a pattern so it's just basically a rectangle wrap more or less and it's a t you you wear it over one shoulder and then you have a clasp on that side and then there's lots of fringe and Scarlett really wanted one. So I found some yarn that I would that would work for it. It's just um, like a bunch of bright colors, kind of reminded me of Halloween Town. And I went to my friend Megan and I was like, hey, help me find a pattern that kind of looks, you know, like like this lace, eyelet lace, but Everything I was finding was a lot more open and I couldn't find anything that looked like, you know, there was some actual knit between there. I thought maybe it was crochet, but with the yarn that I had picked, I'm like, let's figure out something. So she introduced me to knittingfool.com and I just typed in um, lace, like eyelet lace or something into the little search engine there. And I got, now my page got cut off, but it's, you know, knittingpool.com and it's a dimple eyelet. And then the pattern was there. It was free. So I just took, you know, they just give you basics like, okay, you need multiples of two stitches. So I cast on however much I wanted, just made it with sure it was divisible by two. And then there, this is an eight row repeat. And believe it or not, even though... The front of this looks rather, it looks mostly stockinette-ish, minus, you know, the little bumps by the eyelet holes. Most of this is pearl stitches, which is really fascinating to me. So out of the eight rows, only two of them are knit, and every other row is worked pearl-wise. But in the way that you, I'm going to move my coffee here. And the way that you make this, the eyelet here, you yarn over backwards. So you're, you're, you're doing it pearl wise. And so usually I would just take my yarn and put it over the needle and then bring it back around to the front to do my pearl stitch. You put the yarn in the back and bring it over to the front, purl two together, put the yarn in the back, bring it over to the front all two together and that combined with on the next row you are purling through the stitches again and you purl through the back loop of the yarn over creates this this look here which is just fascinating to me because it more or less looks like stockinette with eyelet holes and I just love it so this is almost done I'm going to get so I started with orange 
and I'm going to end with orange. So you can see I'm in the red row now. So I just have blue and green and then I'll bind off in orange. And that will be plenty wide enough for my little scarlet. I'll put fringe along here and then on one side, you know, one of the sides and then she can just wear it like, you know, a little shawl wrap. It ends up looking like a poncho almost, but you know, it's removable on the side there, but I thought I would surprise her and get that done for her. She's on her way home to me. She's been gone for a month. She's been, spent that month with her grandparents. So she's coming home. I'm almost done. I'm hoping I can get it done before she gets home. So I've been working on that quite a bit since I got done with this. And what else? What else do I have? Oh, yes. So another whip that I have is for Scarlet, and this is in my awesome bag that I got. It's tarot cards. This is by Anomalous Mind. I got this same bag for Chevy World, so we're like bag twinsies. So I have been working on The Last Unicorn. I'm trying to find the front page here for you so I can not give anything away there. So, The Last Unicorn by Megan Reagan of Bad Wolf Girl Studios. Uh, Bad Wolf Girl sits and knits. I watch her podcast as soon as it comes out. And I'm telling you what, Megan is, is amazing at coming up with color work. She just keeps coming up with all these things that I want to knit and I have to step back a second because I have too many things on my needles. She was showing a little pirate ship uh, cowl the other day on, on her podcast or the other week and I just want to put that in the yoke of a sweater for my husband. He would love that. She's got this little Excalibur one. She just came out with this unicorn one. She's got this cute little dinosaur one. I'm just like, can you slow down a minute? so that I can catch up but don't please because your your patterns are awesome so I am gonna show it backwards probably there we go almost done with it and this is for Scarlet and we've got our rainbow and our unicorns and Scarlet's favorite color is red I guess I aptly named her Scarlet so we have our rainbow, it starts with the red color, goes into orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, down into these awesome unicorns. And then I decided to repeat the rainbow at the bottom because I was worried that I might run out of yarn for the sleeves. And that was a good call because this is what I had left for the sleeves. So I went ahead and got another one just because that way I have enough for the sleeves and um, I bought full skeins for this so I have all of this that I may turn into something else. I don't know if I'll knit myself a cowl with this unicorn. I could cast this on and maybe do a different body color and have matching with her. I could make a matching one for the dog although I probably wouldn't put the dog in, in, in this yarn. But anyway this is Mantosh. Farm Twist, yes, and the main colors in Patriarch, yes, Mad Tosh Farm Twist, that's a, a DK. So, I'm super excited. I was going to get this done before she came home, but I really don't know, like, I didn't want to make the arms, like, too loose for her, so I was kind of going to wait till she got here to finish that the doing the arms and this is a test knit that I that I'm doing and this pattern comes out in October if I remember correctly um I don't know if it'll come out sooner um I all of the I love in the test knit group all of the people have so many awesome colors that that they're doing and I just love everybody's everybody's rainbow like there's there's one that's got like 
some greens and the unicorn are greens and there's like some browns and oranges in the rainbow and it's very like fall colors there's a one where somebody did a black one and it's like bright neon uh, I just I just love everybody's everybody's unicorn they're really awesome but that's for my scarlet and that's just about done the other thing that I have been working on I cast on for and of course I never have the I always have the pattern showing there I cast on for the carved pullover because I just love it I fell in love with it last year didn't have time to make it I was working on some other stuff so this is the carved pullover and it's by Emily Haver um, and she's a uh, real big stitch on Ravelry and Instagram and she has like um I don't remember the name of the cow but it's a spooky cow Halloween cow something related to that make along create along crochet knit along but anyway I cast this on for that because who doesn't want to work on Halloween stuff in August I, I don't know so I have that in my cute little Lila Styles bag. I just love this bag because I love Nightmare Before Christmas. And I am doing it in lime green. Well, it's actually springtime in Paris green, but whatever. I just love this color. This is this is probably one of my new favorite colors. It's not new, but my gets the the most attention right now because I just did that astraeus in like a really bright green so this is forbidden woolery I think she's since since named renamed her company as forbidden fiber co and this is in springtime in Paris and this is superwash BFL and I just love this yarn it's it's really bouncy and I like it and I've got, you know, my cool Halloween stitch markers on here. Got a little witch hat and a little pumpkin. And these are just charms that I bought at Michael's or Joann's or something and put them on jump rings and made myself some stitch markers. This is a book of spells. Anyway. I am almost, almost to the point where I get to start doing the carved pumpkin part. So that's exciting. This hadn't got much attention lately since I cast it on because I do this thing where I cast on all the things and then I pick which one I, I'm in love with and I've been working on other things since then. So that and in I got a bag from a nod to mama and this is Kimberly Cummings I want to say Kimberly Cummings and Kimberly actually comments on my podcasts quite a bit and I you know see her comment on other podcasts that I watch and and I follow her on Instagram and she started making bags I guess for a while she you know had thought about doing it but never put herself out there and I'm so glad she did and I ordered as soon as she posted and put herself out there I ordered this bag and funny enough um, Aquila from the the lefty knitter we ordered the same print <laughs> we both shared we both shared our bags on Instagram and you know where I was you know trying to give uh, Kim you know a little boost like hey everybody go check out her bags and I'm um, a cool message me and she's like oh yeah I ordered this one and she ordered the the drawstring bag where the the drawstrings are attached here so it could be like a backpack version and I got just the project bag version with the drawstrings on the top but we ended up getting the same print and I just love this bag it's so awesome not only is it a really good size project bag I had I just had all of this yarn in there 
So, you know, it's a really good size project bag. And it came with a Notions pouch. Like, really? Also? And it was a really good price. So you guys should go check out, check out her Etsy shop and her Instagram. But I, the thing that I love about this is this little daisy has a smiley face. But, yeah. So, I got that. And this yarn is a shawl that I'm going to be working up here soon. But that's pretty much what I got going. Um, but you guys go check her out. This is really awesome. The most important thing about her bags is that she uses recycled material. So like thrifted material, things that would, would go to waste. You know, there's like so much fast fashion now. Things get made, bought, worn, tossed aside, donated. And there's no need for things like that. So she's got like, she's got a great idea behind her company too. So a nod to mama. Check her out. I'll have the links down below. But until then, everybody take it one stitch at a time. Because that's all you can do.